What's up, everybody? Nathan Collins here. So, I'm the host of the Diamond Studios podcast, and normally we're joined by Kevin Beggs and Jonathan Boucher. This one's a little different, all right? So, I had the honor of sitting down with Brandon Davis and his wife, Destiny, and if you don't know who they are, you're about to learn really quick, okay? They are genuine people um, who love music, who love family, and... They are doing an incredible job with the balance of both. And that's one of the things that we focus on on this podcast. So I had the amazing opportunity to sit down and talk with them. I will tell you, we had a podcast structure. Okay. There was a structure. Um, but sometimes conversations just kind of happen naturally. And um, this is one of those things. And it was a great conversation that we had. And uh, I can't thank them enough for taking the time to hang out with us and I'm excited for you to hear it. So without uh, dragging this on any longer, um, I hope you guys really enjoy this. And after you watch this episode, please go buy his music, download his music, stream it, go check out his merch on his website. Um, Literally, if you look him up on any social media platform, Brandon Davis, you're gonna find him, follow him, all right? Show some support, um, show him some love, buy his music. Um, support what he's got going on the guy's amazing amazing both talent wise and uh, just as a human being he's amazing and uh the same for destiny and so uh supporting them will go a long way um yeah enjoy the enjoy the episode all right what's up you guys how are you doing great about yourself doing fantastic so um if you will uh, take a couple seconds, introduce you. I'm sure anybody watching this right now, they probably clicked on it because your faces are on it. And if you open TikTok or Instagram or anything like that, your face is also on that. So they probably opened it because they know who you are. But take a little bit and uh, introduce yourselves and tell us who you are. I'm Brandon Davis, and this is my beautiful wife slash manager slash everything you could ever dream for in a supportive partner, uh, Destiny. And we're we're who we are because we uh, love, that's the best way to describe it. We love music. We love the family in it and yeah, trying to make I sure mean, everybody knows it. Really because you decided after, which we'll, we'll get into that, but you decided after a life-changing moment to chase your dreams and then it was worth it. And so that's kind of where we're at. That's amazing. Ooh, I didn't think I'd have such a hard time describing myself. <laughs> <laughs> you always say it's harder to talk about yourself than someone else. <laughs> It is. It is. And if it's not, then it's probably a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> I could be an announcer for a TV show, but make me an announcer for me and I'm not doing so hard. Oh, dude. Yeah. No, I get it. I, all right. Are you one of those guys like, do, do y'all know how to take compliments or are they awkward? I'm awkward with compliments. I'm real yeah. awkward. Yeah. I'm real it's awkward. Like, it's like who it's coming from and what, how they say it, but yeah, I'm, I'm awkward. I'm always yeah. He still calls me beautiful, and I'm like, no, I'm not hush. <laughs> like, okay. It's weird. That's a wife. That's a wife thing. I, think, <laughs> I don't know. I think there's like a master a master plan behind what wives do because I do that to my wife, and she's like, shut up, you know. But <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think I think you guys play mind games on us with that one. I don't. I think I don't know. I feel like it's just I say it before I even realize I'm saying it too. But usually he wants something. Like he's like, "You're beautiful. Can we go out to eat tonight instead of cooking at home?" <laughs> and it's like you, you're beautiful, and Habachi is serving a pretty good lunch. So I'm like, "What do you want?" So, yeah. <laughs> and both of those in one day. That's like, that's up there. That's pretty great. So how exactly how exactly did you guys meet? How did this amazing chemistry happen? Facebook. I mean, really. Yeah. Not to be that guy, but I was, I, so I found a, you know, the section that always pops up, people you may know, and she yeah. was in people you may know because we had mutual friends. So I sent her a friend request and she ex- actually accepted it. And then I was that guy that slid into the DMs because I'm not going to lie. I just thought she was, I thought she was hot. <laughs> let's just be honest. Let's what? put it out there. I thought she was hot. But I was respectful. I didn't send her a message like, hey, you're hot. You want to go out? <laughs> I sent her a message. I'm just like, hey, how are you? And those four words just turned into a conversation that three days later led to a date that led to what you see now. 
crazy. It's, it's so funny because I think when we say we met through Facebook, a lot of people think it's through Facebook dating because they started that, yeah. I think, during COVID. So that was after we had already – God, we were already married at that point. We're, but, we're the OGs. But it was – you did. Split into the DMs. That's crazy. I did not know that. Yeah. Yep. Crazy. And we, we grew up 20 minutes from each other. He graduated to – Grades ahead of mine, but we had so many mutual friends. It's crazy. We never met. Yeah, hung out with a lot of the same people, but never hung out with them at the same time. At the same time, yeah. That's and wild. Well, it's even in the song "Forever and Always." Like, uh, we talked for hours till it seemed like days. Couldn't wait to meet you face to face because I talked to her for three days straight yeah. and never actually met her. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the funniest part is he was talking to me through Facebook Messenger. We still talk that way. We don't text each other. We Facebook message each other, which is so weird. But that's what we do. It never changed. <laughs> yep. You guys ever go through and just like continuously scroll up and go back I, to the beginning? Yeah, I actually do a lot. The very first comments, because um, I can search for, I remember I was like working on the house and I was talking about myself and he was telling me about himself. So it's actually really easy to find those keywords and go back to the very first message that was that's literally, amazing. hi, how are you? That's amazing. Now, I know, I know you have a lot of songs based off of like, you know, what you guys have been through and, um, and who you guys are now, but have you ever thought about going through and, ah, oh, dude, I'm get, I forgot I was recording this. Um, I just broke the fourth wall. I'm so sorry. Um, I was about to give you an idea and I'm all right. But have you ever <laughs> gone through and like put melody with like exactly like word for word? No, I haven't, but I, I am curious to see how something like that would lay out. I was being pretty sure and pretty distant in the beginning, so it would probably be like, I'm okay. <laughs> sure. And, and you could do, like, for every minute she left you hanging, you could just do an instrumental break. Oh, my gosh, that's so uh, funny. There's so many see, that it does would have that. To be, it would have to be a music video, the whole thing. That way, when it got certain lyrics, it just turns into pictures of her sending me a picture of the house. They're like, And she was saying that I was doing – Nothing <laughs> but the picture, and then cut back to lyrics. I was actually laughing the other day because we just bought this house for a now in October. Great house. It really did not need anything, but needed updating in my terms. Um, and so I tore out two walls while he was gone. Two, and two. three walls two while walls. he was gone, and <laughs> we've we've been it's been crazy over here. We're getting back to it's almost done. It's point ninety percent now. But it was so funny because he loves to give me crap about it. And I was scrolling back through the old messages. And the very first day he met me, I was doing the exact same thing as a single mom in a different house, remodeling it so me and my kids could move in. And I was like, you knew. You had a warning. <laughs> this was going to happen. You knew what you were getting into. So now I'm afraid every time I go to Nashville to write or to do any kind of vocal yeah. or anything, I'm going to come back and there's either going to be a wall missing. There's going to be something that's got to be put together or torn apart. So I'm always on my toes. I come in the door kind of like waiting to see what's going to happen at a surprise birthday party. I'm like, oh, okay, and <laughs> oh, nothing's changed today. We're good. Oh, wait, never mind. In the living room. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, that's a good thing. It's good to stay on your toes. Oh, I yeah. Mean, She's good I that's wild. Like, you just remodel the house. Yeah. I think I'm pretty good about – like, it, I, I see a lot of wives that are like, okay, I, I took down the wall. Now I need you to fix it. I think I'm pretty good about following through. I just, you're just like, I yeah. didn't expect that to happen. Like, <laughs> that's a bonus. Yeah. That, bonus. That's, that's I mean, We've got the down pad of like kind of going back and forth. She does the, does the tearing down. I'll drywall it back up. And I'll mud it and she'll come through and sand it. So I think we've got this 50, 50 thing down pad. That's important. That's super important. 50-50 between yourselves, and then you have how many kids? We have four. We have four kiddos. Yep. All boys, right? The oldest is a girl. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I knew that. She's a um, second mama. She tries to be, at least. I believe it. I <laughs> Just like her mama. I believe you, man. She is. She's exactly like me. Look at that. That was cute. What <laughs> He's oh, probably like, okay. yeah, that attitude yesterday. Now you're <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> That's, oh, really? oh my gosh. Okay, so speaking of like you guys and kids, so 
you know, owning a business, um, having a successful music career, being married, um, all of that's super complicated, but doing all of that with kids is a complete, I can't imagine. I don't know having four, um, I don't have any kids and I struggle with me. So literally watching you guys and watching your, watching your day to day, your family dynamics, your career dynamics, you're continuously coming out with new music. Um, you're sporting new merch all the time and y'all just have like the, I don't know. It's such an amazing chemistry. Um, how do you guys make it work? Because you write, you record in Nashville as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So but now, in the beginning, we were actually recording. I was recording him upstairs in our loft when the kids were asleep. Or in the master night. bedroom closet. So. <laughs> we For still we have engineer credits on these songs, right? <laughs> <laughs> like um, on the back of the album, it's got Destiny's name yeah. down the bottom. <laughs> it was because COVID. The studios just weren't open. Yep. So I was having to do yeah. vocals there. We were having to Okay. Them. Yeah. We, I didn't meet a single musician that uh, on the start of any of these that played on anything. I didn't get to be in the room with these guys. We were, you know, a bassist was tracking at his house, a guitarist was tracking at his house, drummer in a separate place, producer at his place. And then me in my master bedroom closet with her on the, on the MacBook out on the master bedroom floor, trying to get everything together with Granger stuffed in the back corner whenever they were awake <laughs> and the hands up the wall, trying to be quiet. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. So I think there's kind of two sides of how we made it work because the first two years or a year and a half, year and a half. Um, he actually still had a full-time job. So he was working 40 hours a week and we were doing music. And so there was kind of one side of making family and life and everything happen then versus now that he's able to do music full time. It's kind of changed. So when he was working 40 hours a week, it was me meeting him for lunch breaks. We were making reels and TikToks, like just TikToks then. I don't even think no. reels existed yet. No, not yet. Um, we were making TikToks on his lunch break, and then we were going live once the kids were in bed, recording vocals at night when the kids were in bed. Um, and so it was very chaotic then. Um, and we still had sports and stuff like that with the kids. But I think that kind of set us up for success now that – music is the full time because it's like we adjusted to having also a 40 hour a week job in the mix. So now balance is a lot easier because we have those extra 40 hours added yeah. into the week. Yeah, it's made it a lot less stressful. I believe it because I mean, right now you're doing, you've got tour going on, right? Yes. Yeah. And th that's the thing I don't understand because I can't comprehend. I've never done, like massive tours like you're going all over the country you're in texas you've got stuff in tennessee um where else are you going on this tour um, south dakota iowa missouri iowa. or is, is, missouri is not booked minnesota minnesota so we have i think we have something in wisconsin south dakota um iowa for sure possibly maryland north carolina so she's there just about you can everywhere. tell who who's the the business and who's the of course. <laughs> I do a lot more singing than I do thinking. <laughs> I get it. Trust me. Um, that's why. Okay. That's the, that's the dynamics. I don't understand. It's like you're touring all over the place. You guys, you guys are so close. Like as a, as husband and wife, you guys are so close. You cater to your kids on an unreal level. Like there's not a lot of parents that cater to their kids in the way that you guys are and including them in your career, which is, ridiculously selfless and beautiful um i haven't is the new music video out yes yes it last is friday. It, last friday oh okay dang it i thought it was this friday i haven't watched it yet i need to watch it um but i love the fact that you guys include them um is the inclusion in all of that is that one way that you guys make this dynamic work it is i mean so just when it comes to shooting content to promote songs and stuff like that you know we don't i don't go out and like get granger out of bed and say hey i'm doing this i need you to come down and make sure you're ready to go it's hey uh me and her talking back and forth hey we got to go shoot content for this song and all of a sudden you hear granger saying please can i do it please can i do it so it's to the point where i'm just like well go find your hat and boots and come on and i think granger's the one that tends to jump in the most and that's the thing is 
it is really hard when you involve your kids because you're putting your kids out there. And so there's been feedback on both ends. Um, I think when Brandon started music, what encouraged him was he was in that car wreck. He almost lost his life. He came out of the car wreck and he said, how am I telling my kids to chase their dreams when I'm not chasing mine? And so we sat down and I think we were up all night weighing every pro and con. And the biggest thing was family. You don't see people yeah. able to have a successful, healthy family relationship and be a musician. And so that was our goal from the beginning was to be able to make sure that he's not choosing music or family. Right. Um, and so with the kids and it's so crazy cause it's really been, I mean, they've been in videos since the beginning, but it's really been the past year that they've really taken an interest in the music in what he's doing and they want to be part of it. Yep. And so it's always, we just get ready to film a video and then if a kid jumps in it, good. If they don't, yep. they don't, we don't even, yeah. if they want to be in it, cool. Um, so that's kind of their decision whether they want to be in it or not. Granger and Easton aren't in school yet Monday through Friday. So, and Granger is just, if there is a camera, he's usually like yep. in between Brandon and the camera. He has to have all the attention. And so there are a lot more videos than Brantley and Malia. Brantley and Malia are older and they kind of want to do their own thing. And then they yeah. have school and stuff like that. So um, it's been really cool to watch them, though, to blossom into their own personalities. And yeah. if he's singing their favorite song, they'll come into the video. But if it's another song that's not their favorite, then they don't want to be in the video. Yeah. Um, they've each got their own that they've kind of kind of catered towards when yeah, it came to claimed. <laughs> yeah, like Brantley's got a claim to minus you, something's better than nothing. And uh he loves he, he, he Jesus loves and Jesus and Jesse James. James. Yeah. But Granger has Granger has laid claim to fell for you just because he loves I think he loves the fact that he can just belt it as loud as he can. But he he <laughs> loves fell for you. He's right there with Brantley on minus you and then Malia and Easton have their own repertoire. Easton will sing any of them, and Malia just gravitates because she loves writing her own stuff too. So it's really, it's been an outlet for her to kind of start writing in her little notebook she keeps with her. Yeah, that's so awesome. that's kind of fun family times. And then the travel and touring yep. um, is a whole nother part of it that's different. I didn't get to travel a lot growing up. He did, but it was always for travel baseball. So he was traveling baseball and he had something to do and so it's been really cool since I'm the tour manager and I'm working while I'm there to be able to bring the kids along when we can and get to show them all these places it's been yep. so cool and they try to hop up on stage any chance they get they love <laughs> their dad so it's just been so cool to give them those experiences that is amazing like it's such a it's such a good dynamic um I know uh we were watching uh, I think we were just scrolling through y'all's reels, like in the in the spaceship here, the studio. We've got like like a giant, I think it's like a fifty inch TV or whatever it is. And um, we were like just going through the Facebook reels, and the way that the kids, their facial expressions, okay, mm -hmm. they do their best to try to match their dad. <laughs> it's like it's so funny because they don't even see Brandon's face in that moment either. And it is a mirror. Like it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude, you have like generations of baby Brandons just coming up. Yeah. <laughs> and like there's no getting out of it. So the world is gonna be like continue to be blessed for the next like 80 years. <laughs> we always joke Brandon? that. If Granger doesn't end up in acting, he missed his calling because he that boy his he is expression animated. Yeah. Animated. Yeah. Now he's is he the youngest? He is, he's, right? No, he's the second from youngest, but he's the one that hops okay. in everything. Okay. Okay. Most videos. Yeah. All right. So he's in the the newest music video. Yeah, yeah they they're all, all in, they're all in the newest music video. Okay. Dude. I, I can't wait to watch it now. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, okay, what what tips would you give um, musicians who are, let's put aside the family element, and we'll dive into that in a minute, but what tips would you give musicians who are just starting out on, on their career or thinking about it? The main thing is knowing knowing who you are as an artist and making sure whatever you're doing, you're being true to who you are. If you feel like you're led to write something, write it. If you feel like you're led yeah. to cover something, cover it. But whatever you're doing, just making sure you're following 
yourself and your passion and who you want to be as an artist and what you want to convey as that artist with the music that you're putting out there. That's the main thing that I think really gets, I don't, I don't know that everybody looks at it right at the start and you kind of get started just playing to play and they know they have a passion for music, but it's showing that passion that is unique to you yeah. that becomes your biggest ally throughout the whole thing. Yeah. And I think from like the management side of it, it makes it so much easier when you have someone like Brandon that is passionate about it and he's doing it because it's his dream and it's his passion. Um, but I think just on that other side of it, the, the booking and um, kind of watching the algorithms and stuff like that, the biggest thing is just, just post, be consistent, get it out there. Don't be worried about, what if people think I'm crazy or what if people think I don't sound good or what if yeah. people from my high school are going to make fun of me, make sure you have good lighting, take a vertical video and post it and be consistent. Keep posting every single day, you know, at the same time and just prove you're there and it'll grow. It'll go from there. Well, and what I think people get scared of is like she said, putting themselves out there. But the thing is, if you don't put yourself out there, if you don't give yourself the chance to be seen, you're not going to be seen. You're not going to be heard. Yeah. yeah. That's very true. That's what I tell artists that a lot of times is um, like whenever they're writing, they're afraid to like truly write. And I'm guilty of this. I used to be like this pretty bad. But like whenever you're writing, it's it's tough to put yourself out there because of, you know, they're afraid that people are going to judge who they are, you know, like and like, or maybe like if you're I'm an emotional writer. So like I write about situations that I've been through and like that's terrifying to put that out there. Um, but the thing is, is people are you know, human beings are human beings. And whenever you put that relate relatability out there, then it's just going to attract more people, you know, yeah. and then you've got to make that mental and very conscious decision to ignore the people who hate it, you yeah. know, but putting it out there, you never know. Um, you never know who is going to help. Uh, Cause my wife and I both, which I don't know if I ever told you this, but the first time, we spoke, Brandon. You said Destiny. My wife's name is Destiny. Oh, well. <laughs> and the whole time, I thought you were talking about my wife. And I was like, because <laughs> you, you said something like, yeah, Destiny's sitting out there in the car. And she's like, going to go grab a bite to eat. And I was like, how do you, how do you, know my wife? <laughs> like, my wife's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> So we both, uh, we both follow you across social media and, um, you know, this interview is more, it's, it's a really personal interview. Like for me, like these are genuine questions that I have, you know, I plan on having kid, kids one day and, um, you guys are someone where like, you know, in my opinion, you're safe to look up to, you know, like y'all got it and y'all, y'all just have an incredible dynamic and you make it work and it's beautiful and I really think y'all are just a great example to especially younger musicians that want to grow, have successful careers and successful families. You know, I don't think this element is displayed very often at all. Um, definitely not to the degree that you guys do. Um, you know, people may mention their kids, but they don't ever show a focus on them. But um, no, I think it's, it's amazing. And you guys are incredible people to look up to. Um, I'm not sure how I got on this tangent, but there you are. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we're trying not to be awkward at taking compliments. So. <laughs> yeah, oh it. yeah. I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Crazy. He leaves his dirty clothes by the hamper and forgets to flush or put the toilet seat down every now and then. And the trash so, doesn't always make it for the road. But I think, I think communication <laughs> has been the biggest thing. I think <laughs> just talk and talk about it. We, yeah. the kids hear us talk about it. And so it's just kind of been, we know that, I mean, his parents are 30, three years, 33 years, years married. So he had that kind of role model to, to grow up watching and to see yeah. that, when things got tough, they didn't just give up on each other. And yeah. so it's made it a lot easier for us to just kind of work through things. There's nothing that's bigger than what we've already been through with his car wreck. And, you know, I was a single mother when we got together. And so that alone is just a feat in itself, taking on two kids and loving them like they're your own. I mean, yeah. 
Yeah. I don't think there's anything that we couldn't get through. That's amazing. Well, wow. I love it. And I know like all what 42 billion people that follow you. This <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it's amazing. Yeah. You you guys have such a such a great presence. Um, you know, the internet's a dark place. But uh you can always guarantee that whenever you guys pop up on a reel or on a post, it's something it's something light, um, something fun. And um, or if it's not light and fun, then it's something real, you know. And uh, I think it's it's really important. So the final question, um, Zoom might kick us off. So just be <laughs> <there>. <laughs> um, so the final survive. question, do what? I said we will survive. We got this. We got this. We'll just log out and log back in. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle. Um, what tips would you give those that are that want to pursue a career, um, but they're married or already have a successful family? Um, from a like you two have a family and you also have successful careers. Um, what advice would you give them on balancing career and relationships? I mean, the biggest thing is just the involvement and not letting it be something like you, you can't let this be the off limits thing. Like you can't have, okay, well, Hey, when I went to a job 40 hours a week, I had 40 hours a week where I couldn't take anybody with me. There was a set time of day. I had to be there set time of day I could leave. And you know, that was time I had to be away from my family. I had no other choice yeah. with this. There's no reason for them not to be there. There's no reason that I can't sit down on my couch in the loft of my house, recording a demo to a song with my kids sitting in my lap. Yeah. There's no reason that I can't let them have a guitar and, you know, sit there and jam out with me and sing or hop in the bus and ride from here to the festival five hours away and get up on that stage. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing about that too is time management because when you don't have a set schedule, it can be so easy to spend all day working and it won't feel like work as much, but then the kids are like, well, we didn't get to do this today, or we didn't get to do that today. Um, so it definitely feels like work to them to some degree, even if we're playing and doing videos and stuff like yeah. that. So it's just setting time aside, making sure we're doing work um, at one point in the day, and we're still singing with them, jamming the songs in the car without a camera in their face, and you know stuff like that, so it's yeah. not it's just normal life. So when they get on camera, it's just the same thing we've already been doing, but now there's a camera there and yeah, you know, so. Yeah. That is making memories too. Yeah. There's I think that's a big thing for me is I don't have our house burned down when I was little. And so I don't even have kid like baby pictures of me anywhere. And so that made me kind of start taking pictures like crazy. And then I noticed like their voices don't sound the same as they did last year. And then I started cherishing the videos. So now it's just like, oh, my gosh, we'll have videos their whole life. Their graduation, they're going to hate us because oh, there are yeah. so many videos. The fir first boyfriend of my daughter, <laughs> the first girlfriends of my boys, we're going to have fun. We're going to have a lot of fun. That's amazing. I mean, I'm a fan of that motto. Like if, uh, if their first boyfriend or girlfriend can sit through the cringe fest, Oh, um, <laughs> the past, then they're good. Yeah. They're still, that's amazing. I love that you've already like predetermined their dating. Yeah. It's better than the scare tactic. I don't want to scare, scare them. I just want to say like, look, you, you really want this kid that was, better running, or worse. that was running around in his boxers through the house when he was three years old. And he's speaking of himself, by the way, I've seen. So he, I think Barney, <laughs> hey, as Barney I, for I, was a, a, I was a skilled costume designer. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I've seen some crazy photos. I mean, it still carries over through to this day, right? To I mean, the costume. Trust me, stuff. trust me. I've got the I've got a three year old that doesn't let me not get dressed up as either Spider Man, Batman, or God only knows what. So yeah, and I think deep down, I think you enjoy it, right? Oh, he's I'm not gonna lie. I, I still <laughs> love I still love break, breaking out my Batman voice and getting to play a little make believe. That's amazing. <laughs> Um, all right. who turns out to be the villain? So, sometimes I got to play double roles, but we usually oh. try to take that out. I, 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 there's times where I'm Batman, times where I'm the Joker, times where I'm Spider-Man, times where I'm Green Goblin. So it all depends on what the mood is for the day and which kid is willing to be the bad guy or whether I have to take yeah. on the Most of the time they make dad the bad guy. They don't like to be the bad guy very often. No, they want to be the one that saves the day. So I'm the one that gets beat up. <laughs> makes sense. I mean, usually the villain looks like big and intimidating. 
So, <laughs> you know. And you're like, yeah, we're going to take down Goliath over here. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be the one to charge in and do it. <laughs> oh, okay. So, well, that's all the, that's all the like actual questions I have based on the podcast. Yeah. I'm going to throw some at you. Um, these are sim- like literally for my pure enjoyment and curiosity. Okay. Last time we talked, you had no tattoos. A week went by, and this joker appears with like a freaking sleeve, and <laughs> my arm hurt from looking at it. Yeah. So what happened was Christmas. Ow. So he had a painting done by this incredible artist here in Chattanooga, and it was a commission piece, and we basically just gave him this word doc that had all the songs, everything that means something to us, and this guy painted this painting just using those words, and it was incredible, and we were so shocked. This guy spent like three or four months working on this thing. Um, it's Gusto Art, and incredible, absolutely amazing, and so I surprised him as his Christmas present, and he got it. It was going to be the tattoo up here. That's what we were starting. That was it. It was just going to be the painting as the tattoo. Well, he went in to Tim Rogers. Um, he's in Ringgold, Georgia. Yeah, that's Incredible. This man can take a picture of anything and turn it into a tattoo. Like this guy, so talented. So when he went in to get this is when he started talking about doing the full sleeve. Well, that was December and he was starting tour with McGraw in April. And so he was like, I don't want to go on tour with like half my arm done. So he was like, do you think we can finish the sleeve before the tour? So that's kind of how it happened. So, yeah. and it was going back and forth like once a week for a couple months straight. And whew, I'm not going to lie. Like it was, it was a lot to get done in that amount of time, but for the work he did and just the story that got woven into the yeah. whole thing, it was yeah. well. Everything is a huge part of his life and a story yep. and pictures of actual things. The, the stoplight right here is actually the last thing he's seen before his car wreck. I went and parked in literally the middle of the road to take a picture of the light on the arrow phase it was on. Um, and we just sent that picture into him and he just turned the, 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 the traffic light itself into the tattoo. Yep. So lots oh of stuff. Just so much. That's crazy. So we, I told my wife I would ask you about it because around Oh my gosh, it was literally, we got tattooed about the same time. Bro, I'm a wimp. (laughs) (laughs) No way. Look, all I got was this, okay? So I don't know if you can see it, but it says millionaire. Um, So I've been writing the word millionaire on my wrist since I was in middle school um, because I knew what I wanted to do. And like, long story short. Um, I've always struggled with like a lot of self-doubt, mental stuff, you know, that all that fun stuff. So I would always write like millionaire and Sharpie on my wrist and um, all the way up until I was 25. Um, Yeah, 25. Um, I still wrote it on my wrist from middle school all the way until then. And uh, my wife looked at me. I, I just wrote it on my wrist in the car and she was like, would you please just get that tattooed? She's like, I'm sick of smelling Sharpie like every day. <laughs> so um, I was like, sure. So we we scheduled an appointment. We ended up getting, um, she got a whole bunch of cute little, she's a fan of like tiny hand tattoos. Yeah. So she got a whole bunch of those and I got this one. And um, it was a, about that time you had posted a, a photo and it was still like shiny and like just freshly done. And I was like, all right, this guy is unreal. <laughs> and then and then you said something. You were like, like just now, you were like, I couldn't go on tour without the rest of my arm being done. Most people would have been like, I can't go on tour with my arm like hurting all the time. Like that, ah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what to think about it. Oh my gosh. Um, I think he said it felt like a sunburn, but to be fair, yeah. his wrist and his elbow did hurt him. The most, uh, honestly, the worst part for me was up here. He shaded up yeah. here, and it got into the bones in the shoulder. That the was yeah, yeah, that that was the bone chilling part. Was getting up there. The shading took a toll. Oh, I did. I have no, I have no interest in getting a sleeve, but I have mad respect for people who get that. <laughs> I was curious to see. He had three small ones, 
I had this. I had this one over here. Yeah. So I had that. So he had three small ones before we got together, and then he got that one done. So I was curious to see how he would handle the sleeve, but he's a champ. Yeah. I yeah. think he probably bumped it many <clears throat> times and drove him nuts, but. <laughs> yeah, the pain, the pain of a small little bump for sleeping on it the wrong way was not fun. But oh, I believe it. I believe it. Okay, we have exactly 50 seconds left before Zoom kicks us off. <laughs> so um, plug your merch, plug your website and your tour. And tell the people where to find you. Uh, you can find merch and tour stops all on brandondavismusic.com and you can find all our music on any streaming platform. Just search Brandon Davis. It should pull me right up. And we've got a lot of new music coming up with a new EP about to drop called Jesus and Jesse James, along with two singles from it already out in Fell For You and Jesus and Jesse James. So looking forward to this year and what all we got coming. Heck yeah. I'm so excited, man. I'm so excited. Love watching your growth. And um, just watching watching your family grow, it's it's amazing. Um, thank you guys so much for tu for uh, for joining me and yeah, watching. Thanks for tuning in.